Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And we're making a video today that a lot of people have been asking me to do for a bit, and that is S video and composite video out for your Mr. FPGA. Because there's so many amazing formats Mr. can do, but everyone wants S video and composite. So now that I have the parts in and I'm ready to go, we're going to be talking about it today. Before I get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But Mr. is absolutely incredible in analog, and there's so many different formats you can use, but there's a huge bit of interest in S-Video and Composite because I understand not everyone has a PVM that can accept RGB, or some people want that look just for the nostalgia factor. But the simple fact is Mr. has so many different availabilities to output analog video, and S-Video and Composite are here. And a lot of the cores have been folded into main, so now update all will pull them down versus them being their own separate cores. You can even get S-Video and Composite out at the same time. It is a ton of fun. And we already have gone over RGB for Mr., but I'm going to be doing a new video compiling all the different analog signals together. But if you need that right now, just look at the playlist. But let's talk about S-Video and Composite in and of itself. Composite is exactly that. It is everything you need to get a video signal out on one wire. This is what you used to see back in the early 90s. You probably played your Genesis or Super Nintendo on it. Where S-Video was more of a mid-90s thing. And that is Luma plus Chroma and Sync. It's separating out some of the video data onto two lines. And you will see here that there is a sync on green switch on the top of your Mr. I.O., either SOG or Auto. We will get to that in a little bit later in the video, but just be aware that's where it is if you're not sure. But taking a look at both the Mr. Analog I.O. board and this active YC adapter, you may notice something off the top. They are both female mating connectors, and they 100% just do not go together. doesn't matter how hard you jam them in there, it's just not going to fit. That was not really a joke, but it kind of sounded like one. We need to adapt this over to the VGA port on the YC adapter. And the way you're going to do that is just with a male to male VGA cable. Now, when you're buying one, just be sure you're getting the right format. You need male pins on both sides. If it's male to female, it is not going to plug in. So just be conscious of that when you're ordering it. But it's very simple. You're just going to plug one end of that VGA cable into your Mr. I.O. board, and then you're going to plug the other end into the YC adapter. And it doesn't matter how many times I plug something in on camera, I'm always going to have that cable upside down. It seems to be the USB curse except for all keyed video cables. Now, I will leave a link in the description below to the VGA cable I like to use for my Mr. I don't make any money off of it, but later in the video, we're going to talk about why I like that cable. It's all down to 5 volt over pin 9 because not all VGA cables have all pins hooked up. But off the top, out of the analog I.O. board, generally we had VGA, RGB, and component video. But now with this active YC adapter, we're also going to have composite and S-video, and both of those will output a signal at the same time. So technically you could have two TVs running at once. Just remember that the analog I.O. board, if it's your first time using it, that VGA port has absolutely nothing to do with audio. You need to pull the audio separately. I've had a few comments saying I'm not getting any sound, and that is because VGA carries no sound whatsoever. But taking a look at the YC adapter here, let's first talk about S-Video. Now, I want you to know something, and I will talk about it in a minute, but cable quality matters when you're dealing with analog video. It's not like HDMI where you either get a signal or not. S-Video is a keyed system. You will see on these cables here, if you take a look, that they are keyed and the pins only go one way. Some cables are going to have a little bit of an indicator or a notch as to what side is up, but make sure you're examining your keying properly. Do not try to force this cable in because it only fits in one orientation. It is not like composite where you can just pop it in. It doesn't matter. That's as simple as that. You plug the cable in. I have noticed that it's a little bit tight when you first get this adapter, so just make sure you're not pushing too much. And then whatever type of TV you have, the S-Video cable is going to look exactly the same, that port and back. Also keyed, plug it in. Now you can get S-Video into your CRT from Mr. Now when it comes to the composite, it is so much simpler. It is just a barrel plug. There is no orientation whatsoever. So long as you put the yellow video cable into that port, you're 100% good to go and it will be carrying signal. Now if you own a PVM or some models of PVM, there are no RCA videos in, so you're going to need to have a BNC to RCA adapter on the back. If you're using a standard consumer television, you're going to have that RCA port, don't worry about it. 
Some PVMs have the RCA ports for video, some do not, neither of mine do. And then once you've taken the audio out of the headphone jack on top of the analog I.O. board and broken it down into a stereo connection, just pop those in there. That's the ketchup and mustard sort of setup. And like I said, if you do need adapters, I will leave a link in the description below. They are cheap and they work great. Just be aware that you might want to take a look at the back of your PVM if you plan on using S-Video or Composite, just to make sure you have the appropriate ports or maybe you need some of these BNC to RCA adapters. They are very useful, trust me. It's like five bucks and you're going to want them. Now before we move on, I want to talk about cable quality. This S-Video cable, no idea who made it, I got it 20 years ago, is spectacular and if I have to capture a console that only does S-Video, it's what I use for the channel. Now these composite video cables are absolute garbage and I'm just showing them on camera because it's the first pair I found. Make sure you get a good quality cable. And I know I said earlier that I wanted to talk about the VGA cables and what I recommend, and that is because we have to talk about powering the active YC adapter. Because not every single cable is going to have every single pin hooked up, because pin 9 is a variable that doesn't really get used much anymore. But if we take a look at a pinout for a VGA port, and just remember VGA is a port, it's not always the standard, pin 9 can carry 5 volts power over that cable and we can use 5 volts to power the active adapter. We do have a USB port and you can 100% use USB-C power in and that's probably what I would recommend most people to do but you can carry that 5 volt signal over VJ and I'll show you how to jump that in just a moment but honestly this is really simple you just plug in that USB-C cable and you draw power for whenever you would like. I actually use an external wall wart that's just working for my setup but just remember that this does need power either from the USB-C port or over the pin 9 on VGA. And you'll see here on top of the I.O. board, there's going to be these three pins. The left hand pins that you can see looking at this direction on Mr. are going to jump 5 volts. If you put a jumper on the left in the middle pin, you're going to be sending 5 volts via pin 9 so long as your VGA cable has those hooked up. Just make sure you have some spare jumpers. I've got a box full of them, but honestly, most people don't have them around. I'll leave a link down below as well on Amazon in case you need some simple jumpers. And again, I make no money off that. It's just so you guys can find what you need. But that's everything you need to do the mechanical setup. We still need to go over software, so don't leave the video yet. But we either put power in via USB-C or pin 9 on the VGA cable. We hook up the VGA cable between the active adapter and the mister, and whatever video cable out you want into your television. Now one note on the VGA port and cable. This cable is relatively pliable and isn't putting too much downward pressure on the port, but this can be a torque point. Just be careful, make sure you support your cable because we don't want to stress these VGA pins and crack anything to a cold solder joint. It is very hard to do, but I've seen a few people do it and they've contacted me and that's because they basically had the mister floating in midair off that cable. But that's what we need to do mechanically. Now on the software side, as of February 23rd, like four weeks ago as of the recording of this video, a lot of Michael's YC cores have been merged into main. It used to be that they were separate cores, but if you haven't updated your mister recently and you go into the core listing, you might see a year of the you know 2022 we want to see 2023 years so if you're not seeing these in your consoles folder when you go in just make sure you run update all and that way you have the most current stuff this is still seemingly a work in progress so if something's missing it might be down to that and then we need to articulate some settings in the i and i menu as well but as opposed to making you look at this i'm actually going to put the settings for this particular adapter up on screen so we can talk about them there because this just really isn't that visually interesting because we do need to change some settings and every active adapter might do something differently. This is just for the Mr. Add-ons one. VGA mode needs to equal S-Video and TSC mode needs to equal zero and composite sync needs to equal one. Those are the settings we need to articulate to make sure we're getting the proper S-Video and composite signals out of the active adapter. So just make sure you change those over or else things are not going to be working for you. But if you're ever wondering what settings you need for each individual analog connection over on the GitHub documentation, there's a CRT configuration table that will go over every single output that Mr. is capable of using and give you all the statistics of which you need to articulate your settings. 
If we go over to SVideo Native, you're going to see those settings are right there and the Sync on Green switch is not applicable. If we go over to Composite Native, it's going to give you the settings for that as well. And if we go down, you'll see that there's just a little footnote as the active YC converter required. That's what we're talking about in this video here. This is a great resource just to understand all of the different articulatable settings you can deal with. Now one note that did not happen to me, but if it happens to you, I want to make sure it is in the video, is that there is a yc.txt file that comes over with update all, but apparently some people haven't been getting it. I tested this on two different cards and it was perfectly fine, and this just gives different statistical data for this adapter. If for some reason you don't see it, it was available at that link that I just showed, and I will leave that one down below as well. But honestly, I think this problem has probably been resolved by this point in time. So unless you notice something weird, I really wouldn't worry about it. But that is what you need to do to connect S-Video and Composite Video to your Mr. FPGA. You do just need to select the video source in the core, but it looks ever so slightly different. So if you want to have a second part of this where I go through all the different cores talking about S-Video and Composite, let me know down below, but just remember, go into the core, select it, and you're good to go. Can't really do many captures of S-Video or Composite just the way my capture setup works, so I wasn't able to get footage from it, but it looks perfect on my television. Now granted, I'm going to continue to use RGB because it's what I prefer, but if you're into S-Video or into Composite, this is everything you need to do to mechanically connect them and set up the software so you can get S-Video or Composite signals out of your mister. Sure that if you have any questions, leave them down below, but I'll be back next week with another Mr. Video and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But yeah, S Video and Composite are basically here. See you guys next time. Bye bye.